Recently, I won a 2017 Corvette at a Copart auction. I paid over $20,000 for it, sight unseen. It's a flood damaged vehicle that had water over top of the hood, and at first glance, it seemed to be in really good shape. But that was until I found out there was about two gallons of water sitting in the crankcase, and it's been sitting in there for over two years. Using a bore scope, we also found that one of the cylinders has quite a bit of rust. We tried turning the engine over, and it is seized. I started to tear into the engine, but before I go any further with that, I think it's a good idea to tear into the interior and have a look at the electrical system of this car. We're not going anywhere if that doesn't work first. Hold on to your butts because we're about to find some surprises in our flood damaged Corvette. You know, I woke up today and I said, I really feel like removing some door panels because I, I love removing door panels. They're, it's always a good time. You know, some people do um, like golf. Golf is one of the things people do or um, what's another one? Bowling, people will do bowling. Uh, but a lot of people don't know that uh, removing door panels is actually a great pastime activity. Um, a lot of people do it in their spare time. Even if you don't have to remove the door, they'll just do it anyways. It's just that much fun. Now, I don't know if this door panel has been removed or not, but the little access panel to get to this 10 millimeter bolt down here uh, was already removed. So uh, it is possible, if I can see, Sometimes you can tell just by looking at a bolt if it's been removed or not. Usually anyways, I mean, sometimes people just do a really good job and you can't tell. That was pretty loose though, probably been removed. Well, there's supposed to be two Torx bits down here uh, and they're both missing. So I would bet that these door panels have been removed. Really, I should be thankful for whoever started this process because it really is, if you couldn't tell the Sarcasm earlier. Uh, it is a pain in the ass removing doors. I'm using this new tool. I got Hopefully this makes it a little bit easier it's Actually Does seem to be quite a bit easier Moving these pop things. is just Always a pain in the ass man Whew, Man, These things are super tight Man, it is dirty and glassy back here. You can see we've got quite a bit of dirt going on in here. Man, all that dirty, dingy, dull, crappy hurricane water looks like right up to here. That looks like the water line, which uh, that's pretty damn high. Can you imagine this whole car? It was just filled with water, man. And you know what I noticed? You guys see the glass in there? Um, so we had noticed glass in the car up here. I saw a lot of glass up here, and I just figured that it was from the bid lot, but upon further inspection, I'm starting to think that this window probably shattered uh, because it looks like, I think the side window might be tempered glass, but that's what that kind of glass looks like, but it is all way up in there. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it. It's, it's all over though. That definitely, that's not just from being at the bid lot, which I mean, whatever, dude, I had a busted window. That doesn't really change anything. Uh, but yeah, this dirt and stuff is gonna have to be cleaned up. That, uh, that does not look right, but uh, we'll get to that. And look, uh, somebody signed the car. Show you the back of the door panel, all dirty in here. I wanna clean all this stuff up. I don't plan to put this stuff on until we get the car running, because there's just no point, uh, except maybe plug this in, see if like the tweeter works. Uh, I might need the window switches and stuff, but I'd like to get all this stuff clean before it goes back in. Jeez. This door is looking pretty much the same with the amount of dirt and stuff. I'm gonna have to pull those speakers out and probably clean them. You see there's no glass in here though, so that's an indicator that, that probably that door got smashed out. I mean, it was a Philadelphia car. And now uh, if you come down here, oh, what, what the heck is this? We got rust. So it's okay though, man. I can take that off. And I know James at Moto Blast, and we can get that rezinc coated. It'll look like brand new. I'll probably do this off camera, but this will be like a project, taking all this little stuff apart uh, cleaning everything and just making sure like all of our connectors and stuff aren't corroded and uh, when I, before I put this back together again this will it'll all look like brand new. Anyways I'm taking the interior apart so that we can take a look at all of our electrical connections and the wire harness and stuff like that because I don't want to do work on the engine and while this thing's on the driveway I mean the engine's in really good shape I don't know if you guys saw the last video but it's in really good shape. Oh geez. But regardless of the condition of the engine, even if that is totally good to go, 
we're not going anywhere if the electronics of this car don't work right. So I just think a good start is just stripping the entire interior and seeing what the heck we're working with. Torque spits. Look at that. Someone left their tools behind. That is a sign of a bad technician. I'm telling you, man, whoever worked on this before, they had no clue what they were doing. But look at this, dude. So we're obviously, we're missing the battery. You know, me and my pop pulled that out. And here is, I guess this is the ABS unit. Looks like somebody wrote that on there. But look at all this, dude. All of these disconnected wires. And it looks like there's supposed to be another module here. So we've got this one here, this is just empty thing, and I bet you that's the most expensive module in the whole car. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. And here's the thing, it definitely looks like it was there before, and the fact that they didn't put it back in there, I bet you it worked, because they took all the time to put all of these little components back in the car, including all of these tiny little pieces, every single little plug, nook and cranny, all, like, it looks like they're all in there, which is really nice that they put it all back together but why didn't they put that computer in there? So I could just chalk it up as, you know, maybe they pulled it out and they tested it and it was bad and they tossed it. Uh, but just the fact that they put all this stuff back in here, I just don't know, man. So I'm gonna hop on the computer real quick because I'm really curious if there's a computer that goes right there. Well, I gotta say, the wire harness on this car is a little bit more complex than something on a quad or a dirt bike or a motorcycle like I'm used to. And I actually can't find what that module is. At least in the short amount of time that I looked, um, I took this back panel off and you can see they got the subwoofer back here. This thing probably has a pretty good sound system. It's got this big Bose, uh, looks like a sub box. And uh, upon further inspection, we've got another module that's missing here. Uh, maybe here, uh, maybe not, I don't think so. Uh, but all this here though, you can see, definitely stuff is missing. What the heck is this? This looks like uh, some kind of stay, a hold down probably for module or something, but I wish I had a picture just of this area right here so that I could see what modules and stuff. That's what I was looking for online. However, uh, according to the weather, we're supposed to get thunderstorms like any time now. So it's looking kind of a little bit dark over there and it's getting really breezy. So I think it's a good idea since I have all these interior parts out, you know, we wouldn't want this stuff to get wet. So I think I'm gonna pack this stuff away and then maybe we'll get the uh, center console out or something, uh, but it might be time to pack up for the day. That is the one thing that sucks about having this out on the driveway. So actually I did want to address that. I've decided that I'm going to take the heads off of the engine and I'm gonna drop the oil pan and I wanna pull the pistons so that we can at least at the, at the minimum hone that one bad cylinder, uh, maybe probably put new rings in, clean the pistons up, possibly even do new pistons. And this is where I need your guys' help in the comments section below, I know that I had mentioned that I was thinking about maybe doing mods on this car. You know, we're gonna have the engine apart and uh, it would be a good time to do something like heads, cam, uh, intake, exhaust, and get it tuned and just have like a nice, probably like mid 500 horsepower naturally aspirated car. Or we could just, you know, make it stock again and make it run, which that would be cool too, just because, you know, we're saving this thing from the dead. My gosh, this thing was just, water up to the windows, crazy. But I need your guys' opinion on that. But I, uh, the, well, the point I was trying to make though is I don't wanna be doing this on the driveway. I don't know if you guys will be able to see, if, if anybody watched my Instagram update, um, I actually talked about this. By the way, if you guys are looking for updates and stuff, I do post on Instagram, it's Michael michaelsalo350, and uh, it kind of fills the gaps in between because I can't always put videos out uh, as frequently as I would like. But if you look at the driveway, there's a slight slant it's kind of hard to see, uh, but being on jack stands with a slant, it's a little sketchy on this driveway, especially in the summer because the asphalt actually gets soft and the jacks, uh, believe it or not, they sink into the asphalt a little bit. And I actually had a Honda Accord, um, I was doing the brakes on it, sitting Indian style um, under one of the brake rotors while it was on jack stands and the car fell over and almost took out my ankle. <laughs> so I'm not trying to have that happen again. I'd like to pull it in the garage, um, but we do have the Tri-Z in here. If you guys aren't following this build, it's really cool, man. It is a Tri-Z uh, three-wheeler from the 80s. Uh, this thing was trashed when I first got it, and we're almost done. We're gonna be doing the finale video building it. Here's the engine. 
uh, just to kind of show you guys the quality of work I do. Uh, this, is the, this is the original engine from 1985. I completely restored it, uh, built the engine and everything, ported the cylinder. Uh, that's what I typically do on my channel. It's what I'm you know, most familiar with. Uh, but I plan to do something very similar with this Corvette. I don't know if it's going to be a full restoration, uh, but that's just like the quality that I like to do. So yeah, that's why we're moving to the interior while we're finishing that up. So all the engine, and engine work and stuff, we're going to move that into the garage. And that won't be long. It'll probably be just a couple weeks. Look at this interior, man. Just if you were wondering what the inside of a supercar looks like. This is what it looks like, man. Uh, you know, it's a super rare car. You know, a major uh, misconception is that uh, people think that like Ferraris and stuff are really rare, but actually Corvettes are more rare. This is one of, I think it's one of like 1.2 million. You know, it's a super rare machine and they are faster than Ferraris too. Such a cool car, man. Well, as luck would have it, I did start to feel raindrops as I was moving the interior pieces inside. Just another reason to move this project into the garage out of the elements so that we're not at the mercy of the weather. Since it is raining, let's hop over to the computer and see if we can find those missing modules. I wanna get those ordered up ASAP so that we can see what happens when we put 12 volts to the system of this car. Well guys, after some surfing around on the internet, I did find those three missing modules. The first was a video processing unit that goes for a cool $400. The second was the Bose amplifier for the sound system. That's another 425 bucks, chump change. And the last one is the keyless entry module, which seems to be on back order everywhere that I could go, but the best that I could find as far as the price was $198. I have a feeling that this isn't going to be the last of modules that we find missing. Let's finish up searching the rest of the interior and at the end of the video, we'll have a breakdown of the cost of all of the modules that we need to purchase to get this Corvette going. Well, it is the next day. We got rain last night and we've got a good bit of rain today. We got a small break in the weather, but I'm feeling raindrops. The clouds are not looking very friendly. I think what I wanna do, or try anyways, is to pop the top off because that makes removing the interior a lot easier. And let's see if we can get that center console out before it starts raining again. We are at the mercy of the weather. Ugh. Ugh. Bastard. Damn it. <sighs> well, that was short lived. It is definitely starting to rain already. Come on, Mother Nature. This is really, really frustrating. It's been doing this on and off pretty much all day with like sudden torrential downpours. I think for today, just not gonna be able to do it. Now this may be a bit uncomfortable, but we finally got a nice day here. So let's get this center console out. Keep moving with our interior deconstruction. All of this stuff you can see we've got the bolts are removed and stuff. So there, there's just no doubt. I just wonder the extent that they tore this car down, like if the whole dash was ripped out and stuff. And again, I just find it, it's crazy to think that they did all this work and they never drained the oil or like looked in the cylinders or anything that all of that could have been saved with almost no effort. What are you gonna do? If you don't take interior, interior panels apart correctly, you destroy them. It's really easy to break the little tabs and stuff back here. Oh man, we got rust under here. Well, you can see, I think this is as far as they went. So there's another trim piece down here that was clearly removed. None of these connectors or anything were connected. So, I mean, they just kind of threw the wires back in there and when they were putting everything back together. They didn't connect anything. All these were loose. You can see you got ooh, some ugly rust under there, uh, but I don't think they took this other bezel off because if you look at this bolt right here, the dirt is uniform on it from the flood. So you would see little, you, you can usually tell if a bolt's been removed, especially if there's dirt on it, the edges will kind of have like a little bit of wear or the dirt will be worn away. So let's uh, get this other bezel off and we'll have a closer look. You know, this is turning into more of like a restoration. I knew that there would be damage in here, but all this rust and stuff, you know, we could put this back together and hide a lot of this, but I really don't want to do that. So my plan is to take 
all of these interior pieces and I'll be refurbishing all this stuff. Anything that's got rust on it is gonna be blasted and either uh, powder coated or zinc coated. And then anything, any broken clips or anything like that, that is all going to be replaced. And you know, a lot of people are, they're looking at me like, dude, you're an idiot for buying this thing. And oh my gosh, this is horrible. Like this is looking so much worse and worse. But you gotta remember, I bought this thing to be a project. This wasn't supposed to be an investment or, you know, hopefully we can just flip this thing around really quick and I'll have a really nice Corvette for cheap. I wanted this to be a project. So for me, you know, I love doing stuff like this and I'm glad you guys are here to share the experience with me. So just hold your horses and let's see what happens. Yeah, so the connectors on this are not removed, so I would bet they did not get they did not get this far. I think we're actually at a point now where we can take these carpets out. Oh no, it's actually damp under here. Wow, that's not good. That's the first wetness that I've actually found in this car, besides inside the cylinder. Oh man, so you can see some moisture under there all around here. See that it's a little bit wet. It's drying up really quick because it's really hot uh, and humid today, but this is what we got going on down here. You can see there's some bolts floating around. Another one right there, some more glass. And um, I think this is a body control module up here. All this stuff is just floating around though. I think this is a little interior light right here. So definitely not all this stuff was put back, but I am happy that the module is there. I was kind of getting worried that we would be finding or not finding modules after what we had in the back, you can see all this has just got dirt all over, man. So all this is gonna have to be cleaned up. Again, for the, you know, if you are hopping into this series now, it's surprising that we're finding water here because this car has been sitting for two years. Uh, it appears that the interior had been stripped and dried out for the most part, but obviously it wasn't completely dried out. And I do believe it was fresh water. But if you look at the pictures of this car when it was in the parking garage, you can see, and especially from flood uh, photos from Hurricane Ida, the water was like brown, just with dirt and stuff, you know, from the rushing water. Let's have a look in the driver's side. Not looking too horrible. <laughs> Uh-oh, what the hell is this? That's not good. Looks like a micro USB or a mini USB. It's got rust all over it. Oh, more, oh, more things disconnected. This is gonna be a puzzle piece, man. This, this coal car is gonna be a puzzle. Here's our OBD2 or OBD port, whatever the hell you call it. I've been looking at a lot of the connectors and stuff. Most of them don't look bad. Then you got ones like this where there's like I don't know if it's a combination of rust and dirt or what. It looks like the pins are okay. All the contact surfaces, but there's like so something on there making that nasty. But that's all going to have to either be cleaned up or replaced. This is going to be an experience, that's for sure. But that's another thing that I actually enjoy about stuff like this. Like this is daunting right now. But my knowledge of, you know, doing car restorations and flood damage stuff is pretty minimal right now. And by the end of this project, I'm going to learn so much. And that to me is cool. Here are the carpets. I'll tell you what, man, these things are freaking heavy. You know, maybe because they're a little bit damp, but dude, if you just didn't run the carpets, I feel like you could save like a hundred pounds. There's all kinds of insulation foam under here and stuff. These are, I'm going to hit these with the rug doctor front and back and then leave them out to dry in the sun probably for like a week. And that should get, they really don't smell to be honest, but that should make them, like really nice and fresh and hopefully bring up the black like here where all that dirt is. We should be able to make all that stuff look really nice, get the little glass bits and stuff like that out of there. Basically what I'm planning to do is just individually do like one of these seat trays and then do another or carpet tray, whatever you want to call it. And 
I'll be putting them away in storage. And then when it comes time to put the car back together, each one of those pieces will be really nice and kind of like brand new, hopefully. <laughs> Here's the, uh, the center console. You can see just all that dirt and stuff. All that's gotta be washed out. This will be pretty easy because I can actually put this, scrub this down and stuff. These, uh, this that connector, this is the other half of that rusty connector. That's where the rust came from. So I could probably just replace that part or we'll have to see if I can clean that up. And here is the top portion of the center console. There's our cool little badge. At least we got one thing that was nice with this. <laughs> yep. This one's really not that bad. We've got some freaking clouds rolling in here, man. I think we're supposed to get more rain, which is just, it, at this point, it's really killing me. So I do want to try to get the radio and this dash portion out. I just want to see what's going on back there. So if there's any more parts I, I need to order, I can get them ordered now. If the rain could just hold off for a little bit longer, that would be great. That would be great. Okay. Well, it looks like this has all been removed too. No doubt. Dude, this thing is seriously awesome for getting these clips off. Nobody likes taking these stupid pops out. It's such a pain in the butt. Uh, yeah, definitely. We've got missing screws under here too. At least whoever did this did a semi-decent job because all of the clips and stuff are in good shape on the back of this. Like I was afraid that a lot of this stuff was gonna be snapped off. That's usually, like I'm not gonna lie, I definitely snapped at least one of these things so far. It's almost impossible to do these jobs without having something snap. Clip it. There we go. Some of these damn things just don't want to give up the ghost. There we go. Right, let's see if we can get this damn radio out of here. You can see these big connectors were already disconnected. And all the pins look really nice, so there is still hope. I have hope anyways. Yep, all disconnected. It's definitely making it a little easier to take this stuff apart, not having to disconnect all the wires and stuff. But man, do we have some rust back here. Now let's see if we can get this instrument cluster out. Oh my gosh, is this actually plugged in? I think it is. Wow. I don't know how I missed this before, but uh, this is a nice big crack in the floor. I would bet from the forklifts going up and tilting up and then probably the front of the forks or something lifted there Unless this guy just smashed on something really bad while driving. But uh, I guess just tack that onto the list of things that need to get fixed. These connectors back here are no joke. Oh, there we go. But you could see that somebody did have this off. I guess that wasn't too bad. There's our dash, 14,000 miles. Well guys, I think this is as far as we're gonna get with the dash today. You can see it's pretty grody in there and I did discover we are indeed missing another module that goes right there. I think it's an airbag module. That's what these plugged into. I'll give you guys a look at the connectors though. These actually look pretty damn good. I don't know, I don't, maybe they're waterproof, I'm not sure, uh, but that actually looks pretty good. The instrument gauges and stuff are out of there. I don't think I'm gonna need to go as far as removing the heads up display. I think that was not submerged. Uh, not sure, I might still take it out. Uh, but all this like this metal clip and stuff, I may or may not remove the rest of the dash, you know, the vents and stuff over there just to see if there's any more modules 
and you know anything that really just needs to be repaired it's just whew, actually quite a bit of work getting this apart i know the video goes quick but uh, i've actually i've been out here like pretty much all day uh, tearing this stupid interior apart it's kind of like i was saying before like you kind of have to be tedious and work work slow if you just you know, like manhandle the stuff and rip it out. That's when you get those broken clips. I've got all these electrical components just kind of sitting out here. I wish there was a way that I could test that stuff. Maybe there is. Like if you guys know, is there a place where I can take, you know, the instrument cluster, the, uh, the center stack, all this stuff to get it tested before I put it back in? Because it would be really nice to be able to clean this stuff and have it tested instead of going through all the trouble of getting all this stuff back in there to try to, you know, power up the car and then uh, only to find out I have to tear it back apart to, you know, <clears throat> try to fix something or whatever the hell it is. Uh, but you know, at this point, with all these parts laying around, I, I might as well just start listing this stuff on eBay and part this damn car out. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But um, yeah, we're, we're getting there, man. It's it's gonna be a long project for sure. For anybody that was wondering, you know, is it, does, is it worth it to just go buy something at Copart? Maybe sometimes, but in this case, no way. This is, I would say this is probably beyond like the regular do-it-yourselfers uh, project for sure. We'll get it fixed though, we'll get it fixed. So one last thing though, because it hasn't started raining yet, is I wanna check, I think the, like the main PCM or ECU is behind this front quarter panel. So you have to take the, the, the wheel off, or you should anyways. And I can see missing fasteners back here. It's actually loose. So it's possible that they stole that one too. So let's, I just wanna take a look back there because when, my, when I'm ordering these parts, we, we wanna make sure we're getting at least most of them in one shot. a nice wheel man at least i could sell this for you know twenty five thousand dollars and get my money back just kidding guys just kidding i'm so happy to have all these problems to fix looks like we've got this little splash guard here i think this is just clipped in Please be back there, please be back there. Is this the wrong side? Probably be good to take this thing out anyways, just to see what the hell's going on back here. Son of a bitch. What the Well, there's our oil sump tank, but sure enough, those bastards took the ECU. I don't know if you see this plastic tray right here. I'm almost positive it's supposed to be sitting right in there and it's not. And I don't know if I'll be able to get my hand in here to show you, but there is the main connector is down here. I'm not gonna yank it out, but you, you can see the, the connector is down there. So they, they stole it. it. It's not that big of a deal, really. Uh, you know, I could just chalk this up to those modules were broken. That's, and, and, and I'll feel better about it. <laughs> but you know, it, this, is, this is the is what it is project. And uh, uh, under every single carpet or stone that I unturn, we have another surprise with this thing. So I was thinking about calling this car the surprise, but I thought that was kind of lame. So we're gonna call it the shocker. Not the shocker, this is just shocker. Instead of stingray, shocker. All right, guys, it is the next day. I've got our carpets upside down baking in this super hot sun today. Perfect to dry out. You can see like a little bit of mold and stuff on there. But anyways, I did a little bit of digging and I found some more missing modules in that foot panel. Son of a bitch. Wow. Check this out, man. Behind this one computer right here, this was up on the wall. There's actually another one that goes behind it. I don't know if you guys can see the little tray back there. All these little connectors here, they go to that. So that's a missing unit. And then if you look up here, right in here, there's another uh, module that's missing. I think it's an OnStar unit. So that's great. Up under the dash of this footwell. Son of a bitch. Well, no surprise. On the driver's side, up underneath, you see all these dangling wire connectors that is uh where i believe the human module interface or human yeah something like that that goes up there i can see more connectors in the back there too and then 
way up on the side here, you can see all these other connectors. I don't know if you guys will be able to see, but there's an empty spot for another module. Shocker. And another one in the back here. Son of a bitch. Well, I didn't even notice here. There is a plate up under here. And there is a missing module for the hatch release, I believe. See the connectors for it right there. Just, what the f Anyways, I've been doing a ton of digging and looking up the part numbers and where we can get these modules and whatever. Uh, there is one other spot that I want to check though, and that's behind this front quarter panel. Uh, just like on the other side, we had the, I think it's the engine control module. I might have that wrong. Uh, I believe there is a suspension module under here and an antenna. So let's pop this one off. Well, based on all the missing modules that we have so far, I don't have too much hope on what we're gonna find behind this fender, but who knows? By the way, you can see how nicely this grass has completely come back to life. Let's get this bastard off. Son of a bitch! Sure enough, guys, you can see in here, there is a big empty void behind these wires. There's supposed to be, I think it's the suspension control module, and it is not there. So, big surprise, shocker, if you will, up here under that, this plate right here, that's actually, I think that's the digital radio antenna. And you can see that is plugged in, so at least they didn't steal that. So what I think happened, this is my theory, is that if you watched episode two, where I kind of go over the history of this car and the information that I found about it, it appears that the previous owner paid $35,600 for this car, and it was a salvage company that specializes in flood vehicles. I think they realized that they paid way too much for this car. And before even trying to fix the damn thing, they were like, you know what? Let's strip the modules, get some money back, and then list this thing. Because that's the only reason I can, I can see why they didn't drain the engine oil, because it's such a basic thing. So I think all, right straight out of the gate, they never intended to fix this. Scumbag move, for sure, taking all the modules out. And then like the radio and the dash, we're like, it's like, well, why wouldn't they take those? But I think that's because they were trying to hide the fact that there were things missing. So if they took the radio and the dash, I mean, that's something you can look in the window or the, or the auction pictures and clearly you can see things are missing and then you're gonna assume that other shit's missing too. So that's my theory. You guys let me know in the comment section below what you guys think the deal is. I wanna hop over to the computer and look up all these modules, see what it's gonna cost. And I have a feeling it's gonna hurt pretty bad looking at that. So I wanna to try to get one victory before we go to the computer. So my dad has been itching to test these window motors to see if they go up and down. I think before I, I bring them out here, I wanna take the speaker out because it's kind of enclosed and difficult to really see the wires and stuff. So I think, oh, and I can see we're missing a fastener here too. So uh, down here too. Unless they're just, yeah, we're missing them. <laughs> so this has been removed before as well. So maybe we'll even get some surprises back here. Of course, they might've removed this when they did the, the glass. That's a possibility. Looking at the other side, I, can, I see all four bolts are in it, whereas this one is just the two. And there's usually kind of like a glue backing on these. Yep. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, I, I don't think it's gonna put the window up like this, but uh, this could make testing the motor uh, pretty easy. The more things I take apart on this car, I'm realizing that we're literally gonna have to go over everything, but that's okay. I mean, most times that you buy even a brand new car, you have to disassemble everything to make sure that it works. So it's like nothing really out of the norm. There we go. One's gonna bring it one way and one should bring it the other way. Yeah. I don't know why the motor was removed. I looked up in there, you can see where it goes. Okay. Well, if there, then we can disconnect this. Bench test it. And, and put the, the, the power to it. Yeah. You know, we have little things that'll go on here so we ain't shorting anything. 
All right, I mean, I'll pull this other one out and then... Um, yeah, I, I'll, meanwhile, I'll get to make something for this. Look at this. On this side, same thing. If the motor's removed, but look. They must have... I guess they were trying to test these. I wouldn't be surprised if these don't work because they're in here. Why would they take these motors out? Well, take that one out. We can test that real quick. You push, the, push that in, the, 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 in the, the clip in the front. And yeah, we'll, we'll test both these motors. We'll find out. That's hack work, though. Well, that's you can patch that up. You said you got a little alligator clip, Mike. Yeah, the ones we were using last time. Where are you at? You know, I think I moved them because it was a bad spot, and I don't remember where I moved them. <laughs> You ever do that? You put you, I put it in. A, I made a new spot for it, and now I. Yeah, you forget about. It. You got to keep all the stuff where it's supposed to be. Electrical stuff got to go with electrical stuff. Sounds like it was clicking. You can hear it clicking. Yeah. Maybe it's stuck. Like, remember how the seat motors were? Yeah, but this is a gear. All right, I guess we're gonna have to try more power. It definitely clicked, though. Yeah. What we're gonna have to do is get this loose. And I think we'll be okay. Let's see. You hear it? It's buzzing. It's just seized. I, don't burn the motor out. I'm not. That's probably, I bet you it's just, it's gotta be cleaned up. Okay. Yeah, if you hear a noise, it's trying. You know what, take the motor off. Maybe we can go directly to the motor and see. Oh, you know what? Oh shit. <laughs> Will that spin? It's probably ge yeah. geared super low. Yeah, that's spinning. Maybe it's up. Uh, Maybe we need more juice then. Or it might just need to be cleaned up. Sometimes yeah, but you feel it. Who's this? Sometimes electric motors, you just gotta move them and then they, they work. Is it rusty in there? Or no, looks good. It might not be enough amperage to, to uh, pull that motor. Ready? Yeah. It's still clicking. I hear a relay or something. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take, just shut that off. This is sealed. So there's a board in here. This is all really nice. That doesn't look like any water ever got in there. And you can see inside here too. But I think these control, you know, when the window's all the way up, all the way down. Yeah, it tells it when the, the motor says Yeah, it tells out. it when, the, right, exactly. Like my window doesn't go all the way up until you shut the door. Oh, you know, you're right, Dad. So putting power in here, these little things here might control the power that go in and go up to the motor. That's what I'm assuming. As clean as this is, I would think these work. I rest assured that they're, that they're gonna work. It's a shame, I don't know that there's another way though other than figuring out what, you know. What... Yeah, I wouldn't play with that. You might blow something out on the board. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, I would say that's a mini victory. I'm sure those will work. And it, you know, they're cheap enough that if they don't work, it's not like it's. Well, you know when you plug them, plug them in to put the windows. The windows should be, they say when you change these, the windows should be all the way up. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. It's a mini victory that they couldn't test them because I'm sure they were gonna they were gonna take them if they tested them. Sure. I think we can consider that a small victory. I think when we plug those windows motors into the harness, they're gonna work. I hope you guys are ready for a bloodbath though. I spent a good bit of time, actually a lot of time, finding where all those modules, all those places of the modules, I had to find out what the modules were the part numbers and then find out where I could order them, find prices and stuff like that. Websites like this one, GM's Part, Parts Direct, was really helpful. They have schematics and stuff. Like this is the, um, under the one footwell, that metal thing we saw, this is the antenna. It, it just takes a lot of time. I'm getting a little bit more familiar. You can see they have like all the different categories. They're just in weird areas, some of them. But this is where I found most of the stuff and it wasn't all cheap. So I made a spreadsheet here and this took a while to, comp to, to compile, man, seriously. Here, these are all the missing units. So there's 11 total modules that I've counted so far that are missing. We've got the keyless entry mod module, the video processing unit, human machine interface, 
radio receiver, active suspension control module, communication interface module, lift gate control module, OnStar battery backup, SRS airbag module, Bose amplifier, and engine control module. All of those are just gone. They're not even in the car. So I've got all the part numbers right here. And then I've got, these are the best prices that I could find for them new. Then I have the locations here. This was not easy to find either, man. So I have them all listed because it's, now that I'm working with all these different uh, control modules and stuff, it's gonna be easy to forget where they go. The total price for all these units. These are, this is the best price I could find. Get ready for this, guys. Freaking $2,924. Not good, man. So <laughs> that would be a major whopper, but it's okay. I found something on eBay. I found this listing right here, 2017 Chevy Corvette C7 Z06 body control modules. So this is out of a Z06. Mine is not a Z06. It's a regular Stingray, but I did cross references of all the part numbers and they're interchangeable with the regular Stingray. $449. So basically 450 bucks, $25 shipping. We'll just say $500 to round it off. And uh, there's 18 control modules here. Uh, all the ones that I'm missing, ex with the exception of two, are here for $480. That's a hell of a lot better than $3,000. I don't know if this was listed incorrectly or something. So it's coming from an actual salvage yard. Uh, it's a totaled car. Uh, it was in an, a collision. I messaged the seller before beforehand. And the price just seems like mysteriously low. Because if you look here in the back, uh, the like, there's a couple of units here that are more expensive just for the individual unit than it is for the whole lot here. <laughs> so I don't know. Now, like, check this out. If we go here, this is the same seller, AZ Cycle Parts Phoenix. If you look at this, we've got AZ Cycle Parts Phoenix. This right here is the performance data recorder. I'll give you guys a good look at that. And it's got the exact same part numbers and everything. If you look in this picture up here, that's the performance data recorder and the, the camera underneath. Uh, same part numbers and everything's 449, but if you want to buy it individually, it's 540. They've got two of them listed. This is from the same seller too. So I'm wondering if maybe this was not listed correctly. I don't know, but <laughs> I got it for the $480. I'm really happy with that. These are all the modules that are coming with that kit. So I have all the, the MSRPs, the best prices I could find. The total value, if I were to buy each one of those modules individually from gmparts.com or whatever the website was, was $4,237.88. So maybe they meant to put $1,500. Regardless, I would consider this a total win. And speaking of that performance data recorder, the on, on the GM parts websites, it was $865 for that. And then for the camera that goes with that, it was almost $500. So that's like a $1,500 unit that I don't even need. You can see right here, it says uh, status is non-applicable because my car wasn't even equipped with that. So I'm hoping that I can resell that for five or $600 and that'll recoup the price that I'm paying for all these modules. And then if you scroll down a little more, the Bose amplifier and the engine control module did not come in that kit. So I'm gonna have to buy them separately. But even if I do have to buy them separately, it's about $700. So if you take that $700 and you add it in with the, we'll say $500 that I paid for the 18 control units, we're still way, way, way lower than it would have been if we would have had to buy all of these units uh, it would have been almost $3,000. So we're doing really well, and if I can resell those some of these other modules, we may even break even here. Now that is a win. So all of these modules are going to have to be programmed, not all of them, but some of them are gonna, are gonna have to be programmed specifically for my car. From what I understand, there's companies that you can send all of your modules to. They can test the modules so we'll know that they're good, and then they can program them to your VIN. So I don't think these control module issues are actually going to be as big of a problem as we thought. As I'm looking at this project and taking a step back and looking in, in the beginning when I looked at this thing, it was like, this is a major project and I'm, you know, I'm like gulping, like, are we ever gonna be able to fix this? But now that we've been kind of compartmentalizing things, I think if we tackle one little issue here, one little issue here, and just start knocking things off the, the checklist, in the end, all of a sudden, we're just gonna be done. The crack in the floor, I think we can fix that, probably no problem. If we have to put like an aluminum plate over it or refiberglass it, whatever I have to do, we're gonna fix all of these issues, man. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. That helps me out tremendously. And if you're looking for a way to help out the channel, hit that subscribe button, man. When I look at my subscriber count, uh, believe it or not, 75% of my viewers are not subscribed. It costs nothing to, to subscribe, that helps me out a ton, so I appreciate it if you guys do that, if you're enjoying this content. There'll be more content soon. I thought that I would end this video by reading some fan mail that I got. 
Uh, this is from, what is it, Cole? He says, Dear Mr. Sabo, I am not a stalker, but a big fan. Your videos bring joy to me and my dad. I eventually begged my parents to buy a quad. They agreed, and I purchased the 2013 Yamaha Raptor 250. I customized it off your America style 400EX. I ended up selling the Raptor to my to buy my 2006 Yamaha Banshee 350 50th anniversary edition. Nice. Even though my parents weren't too happy about me spending $5,400 at 14, I am. <laughs> I love watching you build and create amazing toys. Plus, I just want to say thank you. Keep it up, have fun with the vet, and thank you for, your inspira for the inspiration. P.S. I'm hoping to create a YouTube channel about four wheelers as well. Any tips? Also, don't sue. I didn't leak your address. <laughs> Just saw the street name while watching you ride, you ride around from Cole H. Well, <laughs> thanks for the letter, dude. <laughs> I figured maybe you were local or something. There's a couple subscribers in the neighborhood that stopped by to see me working on the driveway and stuff. Uh, but thank you for your support and everything, dude. If I could give any advice for anybody um, to, that wants to make a YouTube channel, I mean, there's a million things. There's actual like whole courses that you can buy to, that will help you through creating a YouTube channel. But the two big things, our consistency and quality, if I could say the two most important things, uh, just not giving up and being consistent with your content because I mean, dude, it's been like seven years. It took five years for me to get to where I am now to have like any kind of notable following, not to where, yeah, to have five years to a notable following. But like, dude, in the beginning, you're gonna get sub 100 views and it can seem like, why am I putting all this work into it? And you just gotta keep going, man. And uh, eventually the viewers will come in. And then the other thing is going the extra mile. So like if you're spending 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 hours making a video, sometimes 50 hours, and you're like, man, I'm so tired, I wanna get this video up, I just wanna post it. But if I just did this one more thing, that would be really cool, add like a little extra special thing, but I'm so tired. Dude, take another hour or two and do that extra special thing and people will notice, man. In the beginning it might just be one person, but it will make a difference, dude. Always go the extra mile and make your content extra special. That's the best advice I can give you. The Cliff Notes elevator version. I love all you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.